if we discovered problems uh, in our reads when we performed quality control, we might decide to do some trimming or filtering. Now, this really depends also on what you are planning to do afterwards, what analysis tools you are going to use, uh, for example, uh, what kind of aligner you are going to use in the next step. So, some aligners can cope with more mismatches than some other aligners. So, basically, you have two options. You can either filter the reads or trim them. When you filter them, that means that you actually remove the entire read if there is a problem. When, when trimming, you only remove the, the bases that uh, have bad quality. But you should note that even trimming can actually remove uh, the whole read if, if none of the bases fulfill your, your uh, criteria for quality. It's a fact of life, of course, that trimming makes reads shorter, and this might or might not be a problem later on, depending on what you are planning to do, what analysis tools you are going to use. But typically, the longer the reads, the better. You need to pay attention if you have patent data, because the reads uh, typically come into files, and they are in the matching order. So. If you have patent data, you need to use a tool that can cope with that. So, in other words, if you remove a read in one of the files, then its pair has to be removed as well, so that the order is preserved. If you decide to trim uh, based on base quality, then of course you need to decide what quality is acceptable. Um, there is no consensus uh, for that. There are different opinions, but essentially it's a trade-off between having good quality reads and having enough reads and sequence in general. So if you set the, the quality threshold very high, you will have excellent quality reads, but you won't have many of them. And typically for many applications, we want as many reads as possible. So, what I would advise you to do is you start with very gentle trimming. So, for example, quality threshold of five. And then you check with FastQC what the situation looks like. If it's still bad, then you can always increase the uh, base quality threshold a little bit and try again. Uh, there are several software packages available for this kind of pre-processing. Uh, these are the ones we have in Chipster. And today I'm going to discuss Trimomatic. Uh, many of the things I mentioned are also available in the Princeek package, but Princeek tends to be a bit slower than Trimomatic. So Trimomatic allows you to remove adapters, adapter sequences. It allows you to trim uh, based on minimum quality. So, say for example that the bases in the end of the reads show low quality, so you can start to trim uh, from that end. And you can then either look one base at the time, so if the base is not good enough, it's cut away and then it looks at the next one and so forth. Or you can use a sliding window approach, which means that you define a number of bases uh, for the window and then uh, the tool will calculate the mean uh, base quality in that window. If it's good enough, uh, the base is kept. If it's below your threshold, that base is cut away, and then the window is moved one step further. Trimomatic also has an option for per base adaptive quality trimming, where it's sort of trying to optimize uh, the threshold so that uh, uh, well, keeping in mind the balance between having long reads and uh, reads without uh, errors. You also have the option to, to filter reads uh, based on the um, mean base quality. So you set the minimum value and if the read doesn't fulfill that, then it's removed altogether. You can trim 
X number of bases from either end. And importantly, um, you can set the minimum read length after trimming. So typically, we are not interested in very short reads. So you can say that if after trimming, the read length is such and such or shorter, you are not interested in it and it should be removed. Trimomatic cobs with paired end data, so it is safe to use, but you just need to use, you need to give both of those fastq files as input.